This is Dustin Hurst, Communication Director for the Idaho Freedom Foundation here with Jeff Thompson, a representative from Idaho Falls. Representative Thompson, give me your first reaction to the governor's speech and what he proposed, especially uh, in light of a, you know, his call for you know, the, the discussion for the community college in eastern Idaho to, to be pushed forward. Um, what did you think of the governor's address? I thought the governor's address was very uh, comprehensive uh, as far as from education, 7.9% increase, $38 million of that going to the career ladder. I was, I was uh, pleased that he wanted to include the non-instructional staff, such as counselors and other non-instructional staff in that career ladder. Uh, we have a health care proposal that we uh, that will be a starting point to maybe have some discussion about the 78,000 individuals that are kind of caught in that gap um, between the health insurance issues. Um, I was uh, pleased that he wants to continue to develop economically and uh, the uh, economic output of the state and uh, to move us forward. Um, so there's a, the governor's state of the state to me is always a starting point of discussions and, and different issues of that nature. So. Um, you mentioned the governor's health care proposal. What, what's your initial reaction to, to that? Um, Democrats are calling it not enough. Um, some, you know, conservatives say it's a bad idea. I'm just curious what your reaction is, and I know things that are, are very early in the discussion, but what do you think of the plan early on? Well, Dustin, the plan in my mind is something to start a discussion about. Um, uh, it's, that's, to me, that's what it is. It's something to, to uh, have dialogue about. We'll see if it takes off, uh, if it does or it does not, uh, and we'll go from there. That, that's the only thing that we can say right now. We don't, um, I don't anticipate the state of Idaho uh, having any discussions about Medicaid expansion with the federal government. Uh, the federal government's broke, and so therefore, Say, people are saying do that, therefore the money, well, you can't get money from something that's already broke. And so uh, that is a viewpoint that that being out there. Uh, so this is something that uh, the governor, uh, Dick Armstrong, came up internally with state funding uh, to start a discussion, and we'll see uh, where that goes, if it goes. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned... Um, uh, community College in Eastern Idaho. Eastern Idaho Technical College is there, been there for quite a few years. Uh, I think this is an, an opportunity that is a, uh, just a wonderful opportunity for Eastern Idaho to become a community college. That five million, of course, as you know, has been there for many years to uh, help initiate uh, that transition. And so it seems to be that that's picking up more steam. I know there's a group put together in Idaho Falls, Bonneville County, to kind of steerhead this. Uh, I just hope they don't wait so long that uh, if they if that if the community and the people want it let's bring it to a vote and find out okay. last question you uh, you are a committee chair now but you've had budget uh, experience mm -hmm. on JFAC sure. um, the budget is 7.3 percent uh, according to some figures some are that say it's 8.5 percent increase uh, revenues are 4.9 percent and the budget doesn't include any tax reduction do you think that'll give members of the House Senate and JFAC any any heartburn Dustin, there'll be there'll be there'll be tax reduction this session. Really? Uh, one way or the other. Can you give me any hints as to what that might look like? There's an organization in the state that's got quite a bit of influence that is uh, requesting 100 million in tax reduction this one session, <laughs> and so they've got quite a bit of influence. And I know the leadership in the House and. Um, there, it's been talked about for quite some time. There's been a, a committee looking at taxes and overall in those taxes. And so it's kind of like a perfect opportunity to overall taxes and then to get us to be more competitive with states that are pulling um, companies to them that we really can't compete for. So. All right, okay. Anything else that we need to think about this session? Uh, our committee, uh, Energy, I'm the, as you mentioned, I'm Chairman of Environment, Energy, and Technology. We will be uh, right in the middle of the 111D uh, discussions uh, as we move forward uh, in conjunction with the Office of uh, Energy Resources through the Governor's Office of how our response will be to the federal government on those 111D rules. So I have not done any research on that. Can you give that? Can you give me a, a quick primer on that? Uh, if, if it's even possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, I'll just say my largest concern is surrounding states. We don't have any coal-fired plants uh, that right. we receive uh, electricity from in Idaho, but uh, Montana and uh, Wyoming and other surrounding states do, and they ship electricity to Idaho. And so we've had uh, standards in place for many, many years. And so 111D, from my perspective, <laughs> wants to outlaw coal period. Right, right. And with doing that, which we've not had that for over 100 years as an energy resource, and doing that is going to skyrocket uh, the cost of doing business. 
And so my concern is, was when that electricity is, continues to be sent to Idaho, what's it going to do to Idahoans and their electric bills? And that, that's a big issue for me. It's kind of like you could buy a four pack of 60 watt light bulbs, Sylvania white light bulbs a few years ago for 99 cents. The same thing now, seven dollars. Right. And so um, it's interesting to watch. Yeah. All righty. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.